why don't we go ahead and um, and get started? Uh, I'm Caitlin. I'm one of the admins of Locally Optimistic, along with Alan, who is on mute. So I'm assuming he's got something noisy happening in the background. Uh, <laughs> children. <laughs> um, and today we're talking about um, product, data product management and uh, what that looks like in various organizations and kind of what works and what's really hard and what other folks have figured out. So we've got some sort of conversation leaders um, in, in the group and we'll start with those folks, but I think we've got a small enough group we can go around and kind of let everybody introduce themselves. So I'm gonna ask everybody the same questions, um, which is just, um, who are you? Where geographically are you? Um, and then what does this look like in your organization? Um, do you have data product managers? Do you not? If yes, kind of what are the, what's the product? Uh, is that more of an analytics product? Is that data science products? Um, is that a role that's taken on by some other individual? Um, we'd love to just kind of get some context setting as we go into this. Um, so I will start and be the example. I'm Caitlin Mormon. I'm the head of data at Trove Recommerce. Um, we run resale sites on behalf of big brands and retailers. Uh, and we do not have a data product management function at all. I and to some extent, just every analyst on the team <laughs> and every data scientist on the team are doing this individually. Um, and it's, it's a really big gap, I think. And it's something that we're kind of actively thinking about how to solve. So with that, I'm gonna toss it over to Sam to start. Um, Sam, Amanda, and Helen are our sort of moderator, chief smart people. Cyril Marx may also join at some point if his internet comes back. Um, but I'll let you three run through your intros and then we'll go through everybody else. Sound good? Great. Um, yep. Hi, I'm Sam, Sam Lam. Um, I'm in Sweden. So if you look outside, it's like pitch dark outside right now because it's 9 p.m. But it's been like this since before three o'clock. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I work as um, Director of Data Analytics at Mentimeter, or an online um, interactive presentation tool. Um, does anyone, has anyone actually heard of us here? Yeah. Or have used us, so we're also called Menti, if you actually um, um, take part in, in the audience. Um, yes, it's very Swedish naming, Mentimeter. <laughs> um, was the, uh, yeah, so we've been around for uh, five years now, I joined a couple of years ago as the first dedicated data person. And from then I've been um, trying to build a team up. Um, I don't know if it counts as like data products or a data analytics team. We have um, data and data engineer and um, data scientists and then product data scientists, but we have our own uh, ways of working within ourselves. Um, so we do our own planning and um, and retrospectives, uh, but we also have the, the company is our, our customers, so, so to speak, where as a catalyst function, it's a function we're under when under product and marketing, but under the, like, um, the, the support group. Um, yeah, so that's more or less than before I've been working as a data scientist, my previous um, workplace was at King, um, who, who made Candy Crush, and um, there they had a data, data Yes, the, the data org is way bigger. Um, and there were actual dedicated um, uh, data product functions there. So it'll be interesting to hear about like the different sizes of companies and how, how you work with this. Cool. Um, so do I nominate someone next or do you want to? <laughs> um, yeah, why don't, why don't we let everybody kind of call out the next person who's you know on their screen that hasn't spoken up. We'll go through. I guess Amanda and then Hel Helen, and then we'll we'll do that. Yeah, okay. I'll say Amanda. Go for it. Great. Hi, I'm Amanda. Um, I'm in Belfast in the UK. Um, I am a data product owner for BT. Um, BT is our um, well, it was our national telecoms provider until maybe about 30 years ago. So we're a private company now, um, and we're the biggest internet service provider. Um, the team I am the product owner for is the 
um, a data engineering team that deal with all of our broadband service data. So quite a lot of data coming through us. Um, we land all the, the data from our customers hubs and all of the network elements in between. Um, we product in my company is very, very new. Um, it's a huge corporation with like, you know, 150 year history. So lots of process, lots of waterfall activity, lots of things to untangle. So um, I am the first data product owner. So I've been in the role about 18 months. I definitely feel like I'm still learning and, and trying to establish um, even within the team, just working out what we are. So we um, certainly were an, an analytics function when I joined the team. Um, as the team has expanded, um, we, I know quite a few of our engineers, there's maybe about 30 in, in my team. Um, quite a few of our engineers certainly would describe themselves more as ETL engineers. Um, they, they certainly, their focus is on the engineering, whereas we're trying to get back to that kind of more rounded analytics function where we have some you know, domain expertise um, around the data that we own as well as um, the, the engineering. And then we're hoping to make a foray into data science for next year. There's, we feel like there's some you know, um, data science use cases that we could be taking on ourselves rather than just providing the data to um, the data science teams. So Helen, over to you. Great, thanks Amanda. Um, hi everyone, I'm Helen. Um, I am in New York City in Brooklyn um, and I currently work at Daily Harvest, which is a direct to consumer company. Um, we offer smoothies, harvest bowls, flatbreads, lattes, um, so e-commerce essentially. Um, I've been here as a, in a data product management role um, within the data digital product organization for about eight months. Um, prior to this, I was at a nonprofit health insurer um, in New York City and also sat in a, a data product management role there. Um, and so uh, in my current role, actually in both roles, I was primarily focused on data science products, um, I think which naturally implies data engineering as well, um, as we all know. So work really closely um, with those two teams and sort of sit as an intermediary between um, many of the different uh, departments across the company um, and those more technical teams um, and also work closely with the analytics team. I think uh, there tends to be a lot of uh, overlap between the problems that data science teams and analytics and our and BI functions are trying to solve. So um, yeah. And I will pass it over to uh, Baron. You're next on my list. Hi, everyone. My name is Baron. Uh, I'm in Berlin, uh, Germany, and I'm working at a company called Get Your Guide. Uh, we are a marketplace uh, selling um, tours and activities uh, for tourists. And um, in our company, we have a data products team and they have a data product manager. So this is mostly a, a data science product team. So they own things like recommendation, ranking and so on. But on the analytics side, uh, which is the biggest part of the data team, there is no role called data product manager. And uh, I brought up this um, a couple of months ago and our director of analytics uh, told me that I'm considering analytics manager as data products manager. So um, I guess this is also a different approach. And yeah, this is it. And I will pass it to Erika. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Erica Pullum now. I just recently got married and changed my last name. So if you see me around, it used to be Swartz. Uh, navigating that fun transition in the workplace. I'm sure I've messed up some databases somewhere with the old and the new not joining anymore. Uh, I work for Shaw Floors, which is a global flooring solutions provider. We're headquartered in Northwest Georgia. Um, I am the manager of our supply chain analytics group. Um, so I have a team of about 11, currently flat, all analysts. I kind of serve a data product management role, but it's internally facing. So internal customers, internal portfolio solutions and things like that. Um, we are looking at adding data science capabilities to my team in 2021. Oh, and I'm supposed to pick someone next. Okay, so Ilan is the one who hasn't gone starting from my top left. Hi everybody, uh, my name's Ilan. I'm also one of the admins here on uh, Locally Optimistic. Very nice to meet you all. This is my first virtual meetup. Uh, and so far, this is going great. Uh, I lead the data team at TrialSpark. So, sorry, I'm located in Brooklyn, New York. 
Um, I lead the data team at Trials Spark, which is a clinical research company here. We run clinical research trials. Um, and I have, we have, um, we have somebody that I'm transitioning into what, I've call, what, what we're calling a technical product manager instead of a data product manager, but she's effectively going from being a, a kind of like a senior data analyst into this PM adjacent role. So I'm very curious to see how other folks are thinking about data product managers or technical product managers. Cause at, at some level, it's not necessarily just data. It's just a technical PM, at, at least the way that I think about it. So I'm very excited to participate in the conversation. Uh, next on my screen is Nelson. All right, hey everyone, my name is Nelson. Uh, I'm in San Francisco. Uh, I lead the data team here at Coalition, which is a cybersecurity startup that sells cybersecurity insurance. Uh, and yeah, uh, fun fact, I think I went to school with Jeffrey Sloan, who's also on this call. So I'll pass it to him next, if he hasn't gone yet. Uh, yeah, we did go to university together. So that was wild. I was like, huh, I know that face. Um, but uh, I am Jeff, Jeff Sloan. I'm a data product manager with Treatwell, um, which is Europe's largest hair and beauty booking marketplace. Typically I'm based in London, but uh, right now I'm in the sunny Philadelphia area, um, visiting the parents for Thanksgiving. And the, um, the role of data product management uh, at Treatwell is pretty interesting. Um, I think I, I really uh, uh, resonated with the question around, is it a tech PM? Is it a data PM? What are the differences there? Um, because this role I would definitely say is like a, a hybrid role between being a product manager with the data engineering function and ensuring that the tooling that we build and make available as kind of like a platform or a set of platform offerings um, are like the best for the business and the, the right time and the best for our users um, who are our users in the first place, as well as kind of like um, more almost like a head of BI thinking about which data sets do we need to make available for our embedded analysts to then go off and play with and then be able to edit themselves. So it's um, kind of an interesting one that, that, that wears a, little, a couple more hats or different hats than I think a traditional product manager would. And I need to nominate somebody else. Um, I see the next person that hasn't spoken on my list is a Dylan. Yes. Cool. Hi, I'm Dylan Gregerson. Um, I'm a senior data scientist at a company uh, called Vertigris. Though the knowledge that I'm bringing like to this discussion is about a previous role where I was doing data product management uh, for uh, at, at WeWork. And that really ended up being a lot of a partnership between the product manager and a data scientist that was product focused around gathering analytics and, and, and looking at the performance and engagement on products. We were a SaaS solution and then also design. So there's sort of this, on, on all of our product teams, we had a product manager a data person and a design. That was kind of where we, where we were going and we were proving it out with a couple teams. And so that's really the, the knowledge that I bring to this conversation. Um, I'm based in Salt Lake City. And uh, let's go with Max next. Sure. Um, so my name is Max. I'm the director of data at Warby Parker. Um, so if you don't so if you don't know, uh, we make glasses, but it's actually a, quite a vertically integrated business. So we design our own glasses, we do our own manufacturing with partners, we run retail stores, e-commerce, consumer you know, facing work, and all those things produce data. So um, we've got a uh, data engineering team that has a, a product manager of data engineering who's focused on the infrastructure and prioritizing all the asks from the business. I actually just came out of a meeting, you know, she had 75 asks already for 2021 of like, you know, multi-week or multi-month projects to like prioritize against. Um, on the data science side, I'd say we have like an operational data science team. So we're not really building product features, like the glasses are not particularly like data-driven. 
but all of the supply chain manufacturing retail stuff has got good data science applications and i'm trying to figure out what kind what to call the role or what the role would look like to basically work in this area um we the data science team does have like a six week project cycle like a shape up kind of thing and so i'm trying to figure out what to call somebody who would help manage that process of taking in inbound requests and helping write business cases and pitches and like run that it's, it's not quite project management because they're really like the data scientists do their own prop managing their own work it's not really product management we don't have a product we have a lot of like projects so I'm excited to hear anybody else's ideas and currently thinking like data science operations manager but that's kind of a made-up title so any better ideas totally all yours um and i will pick stephanie Hello, hey, it's uh, nice to meet everybody. Um, I am a senior data scientist at a startup in um, a remote startup that is in the space of Python and um, uh, we build a software platform that um, allows people to parallelize Python uh, across DAS clusters. Um, our name is Saturn Cloud. One of my other colleagues is on this call as well. Um, but one of the things that's uh, that may be interested to to join here is that we are a very small data team it's just the two of us we're hopefully adding people soon that will be able to help us um you know drive our product roadmap and our product decision making uh more sort of knowledgeably because we are definitely in the data science space and with limited experience in the product side um so i'm trying until we get someone who's full-time on data product management to learn more, to get better at this and to um, figure out, you know, the, the right ways to make informed decisions about, you know, features we add and things we're gonna do um, before, you know, we, we get, uh, grow a little bit more for that. So um, yeah, I'm based in Chicago, so it's nice to meet everybody. I'll make my colleague go next, unless Aaron, did you already go? I didn't, no. Okay, well then Aaron, Aaron will go next. Cool. Um, I'm actually wearing my Warby Parkers. I got the case right here too. Uh, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, Stephanie covered the intro for Saturn. I'm also a senior data scientist there. So we were actually literally just having a discussion about data product, product management. And I saw the, the little notification from the, the Slack of locally optimistic. I'm like, okay, we have to join this thing because <laughs> it's too coincidental. Um, so yeah, mostly here just to listen. So. Um, and uh, I don't, I joined like kind of late, so I'm not really sure who uh, hasn't gone yet. Um, no worries, I'll nominate Steven. You haven't gone yet, have you? I, I have not, no. Okay, perfect. <laughs> uh, this, this is like getting picked for kickball in you know, elementary school. Um, so hi, uh, Steven Kubalati. Um, I'm the data analyst at T Public. Um, we are a marketplace for graphic designers. Um, where they uh, can sell their uh, their designs to customers. Um, and so we, we handle the marketing and supply chain, customer service and all that. Um, so I use the, the article V uh, very specifically. Uh, so uh, we have one data analyst and one data engineer um, and we are rapidly growing. We're adding two more data analysts, a data scientist, another data engineer. Um, and we recently started our search team that, that focuses on um, the internal search function and also recommendations. Um, and so the only sort of PM function we have right now is sort of on loan from the search team. Um, so they just sort of help manage things, make things sort of work well, um, but they don't really have a lot of the context. So I'm sort of filling in. So we're sort of working part-time both in the sort of PM sort of space. So um, yeah, I'm interested in hearing um, others' uh, situations. So that'd be great, thanks. Um, let's see, uh, next is uh, Cameron and, and my list of people. Uh, so I joined a bit late guys. So am I just giving like an intro about my background? So yeah, uh, my name is Cameron Malik. I'm a data engineer at JetBlue. Um, we've actually just completed, we're uh, at the finish line of our um, 
uh, migration to Snowflake. So we migrated to Snowflake uh, using DBT, primarily Azure Data Factory, and a little bit of uh, Fivetran. So we're completed. We're completing the migration in a couple of weeks, uh, and we're shifting from our on-prem SQL Server data warehouse to you know uh, Snowflake and more cloud uh, utilizations. Um, and uh, right now, uh, I don't. We don't have a you know a real product manager or product owner of our, of our data. Uh, it's kind of more like uh, we have business users who are SMEs on certain certain data, such as flight data, revenue data, etc. But I kind of joined this uh, Zoom meeting to see if, if I get a little more insight on how people at other uh, organizations are doing it. But um, yeah, it's nice to meet everybody. I nominate someone, right? I can yeah, go because I joined late. Uh, I'm Jay. Uh, I run engineering and I'm starting data stuff at a company called Elysium Health. We make um, direct to consumer supplements for things like brain health and cell health and DNA testing. Um, whole company's like 25 people. So I'm the data. Uh, I have three engineers working for me that do all of engineering. Um, Previous to this, I ran data engineering and data products at Rent the Runway. So I had a larger team. Uh, we had a data product manager, very mixed results. Uh, it was, there were good and bad parts to it. Uh, very good. She was very, very good with talking to business stakeholders. She didn't really understand what data science was. So very big challenges of what she could promise and how things actually worked and what we could deliver. But yeah, I, I think you need someone with some domain knowledge here to be able to uh, to be able to do the role. But I'm interested to see what everybody else is doing, as especially as I start analytics and data science where I am. Awesome. All right, Jackson, have you introduced yourself yet? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jackson. I'm working in a food tech company in Brazil called Livap. Basically, we are a B2C company responsible to deliver ultra frozen health foods for our customers uh, around the country. And I'm a data analyst responsible for the logistic team. So basically we deal with uh, all the data and to try to empower our team. Talking about our, our structure of the team, we have the data team with consistent in some data scientists and an analytics team with business analytics and that's my area. And uh, I'm working with logistics. We have another uh, analytics team working for consumption, for marketing, and this going on. Awesome. I uh, is there anything else who haven't? No, that's great. Um, Rohit, are you? Yeah, I haven't got it yet. Yeah, okay. I, I can go, sorry. Hey guys, uh, my name is Rohit. I'm based in Toronto, Canada. Um, I work at a company called Dolphin. Um, so we actually build an editor for data scientists. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to do is figure out, um, you know, what what data PMs really care about as far as like you know outputs and workflows and that kind of thing. Um, and so yeah, this this conversation interested me for that reason and I wanted to participate. And I don't know if I have if there's anyone else that hasn't gone. Awesome, um, Avi, are you? You have your screen off. So I don't know if you're I'm sorry, I was multi okay, cool. a little bit. No, no, that's uh, really fine. Just didn't want to put you on the spot if you didn't want to be. That's okay. <laughs> uh, don't mind that. Hi, all. Uh, I'm Avi. Uh, I'm in Austin, Texas. Uh, I work at a company called Drops. Um, we sell sustainable laundry cleaning products online. Um, we don't really have any sort of data product management, we're, but we're kind of trying to figure out better how to prioritize projects and things, especially those that involve like multiple teams and stuff. And I honestly don't even really know exactly what people like, <laughs> what encompasses a data product and make something a data product when people talk about that. But it seems like something that, I don't know, could be helpful for prioritization at least. So I was just kind of interested to hear what people have to say about that. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, I'm super excited to get into this a little more. So I'm gonna throw out a couple of initial questions. If anyone has questions, feel free to jump in. This is like a very free form. These are always very free form and open-ended, but um, I'm gonna start with actually what Jay pointed out, which I think is what makes this role really challenging. It's like, what is the right background 
for a data product manager? Is this a product manager who has learned a lot about data? Is this a data person who is learning how to manage product? Um, kind of how do you balance those two sides of, of what, what this role can be? I think it depends yeah. your org and, and what you need. I don't think there's like a one answer for everything. If you're, if you're going to build things that need a huge amount of domain expertise and are really complicated, your product manager probably needs to understand that. Uh, yeah. Like if you're, I mean, that's just a starting point. Yeah, I, I think, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, um, I, I think it, it depends on sort of where you're hoping the data product manager will focus most. Like for a reporting function to help prioritize, automate like manual data reconciliation in Excel and that kind of thing and, and make sense of, you know, like really early on, like potentially like data engineering work and infrastructure, like that type of reporting and, and intake and prioritization of work, I think maybe can be done with less technical background, but um, in that almost becomes like pro project management in a sense. From my perspective, um, working as a data science product manager, I am not a data scientist, but in undergrad and graduate, I took many statistics courses. I worked as an analyst when I came out of college, so have some SQL skills. And I think like, I don't think I would be able to do my job effectively without that background. And that that's a very personal, and biased opinion, obviously, because it's helped me be successful in my roles. I, I hope that my teams would think that, but, um, I, you know, I think there's just like some foundational limitations, like you were speaking about, Jay, to what data science can do and like being able to understand that like you need a certain size and amount of data to be able to uh, effectively do NLP work and like make sense of all that kind of stuff and not over promise, like, is what makes the difference between good relationships between stakeholders and technical teams and like really bad over promising and under delivering. So um, I could talk about this for a very long time, but I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just going to say, I don't think they necessarily have to have the background, but they have to be willing to get up to speed and to, you know, to have those conversations and, and to know when to speak to the team. And, you know, I don't have a hugely technical background. Um, I, um, have a, a sh short period um in which i worked as a data engineer and um, it was my first role in technology it was a career changer so i did work as a data engineer for a couple of years but um you know where i think you just need to be willing to speak to your team you know about about what you, you need to get up to speed with and then if if i was still 18 months in relying on the team for every decision then you know the relationship's not not going to be sustainable but um you know i i learn what i need to learn in order to you know, have those conversations with the customers um i had a colleague who came from a project management background and when the role was introduced um you know 18 months in he was still solely focusing on dates and um taking requirements and handing them to the team and then by the time the team picked them up you know he hadn't he hadn't begun to have any kind of sensible conversations about the requirements as to how feasible they were or um try to shape them from the team's perspective or, or add any value and um you know, 18 months in that's not sustainable so he's he's moved on to another role so i think the key is being willing to learn as much as you need to learn I think thinking about, you know, we're kind of looking at this transition as we scale up data science and I kind of share with Amanda, you know, we're 50 years old, so you're like three times the age that we are, but we're a mature company where a lot of leaders have come up through the company. We have a strong loyalty culture. People hang around for a long time. You know, relationships are a really key currency for us. So I think a good data product manager is going to be a chameleon so they can match to the tone and the character of that technical team, build relationships there, translate to the stakeholder side. And, you know, like the customers Max has at a company like Warby Parker are thinking totally differently. The internal customers that do logistics at Warby Parker, I'm sure, are thinking totally differently than the folks that I have to talk to. So the key role for, for me for the data product function is I'm a translator. And I'm saying, hey, this is really not that complicated. Like I promise it's just regression or, hey, we're just going to put stuff into buckets based on stuff we already know. Like, come on, don't get scared. Just come with me. Let's solve this problem. 
Um, and we do that even with our, you know, small scale, more reporting level projects. So I think it's very situational, like Jay was saying. I, I sort of adding on to that, it's the, so, some of it is the ability to MVP really well because if you have all of the context that you need, you can confidently make that decision of, yes, it's just regression. We don't need to like build this huge project in order to, to solve this problem, or it's just bucketing things. That's really what you need. And then we can talk about the other things that you need in the future, just like MVP, because you need that context. I, I think actually what, what's really like important there that you're, you're picking up on Steven is like the ability to kind of have the have enough context to be able to like push back in the right scenarios, like trusting your team as experts, obviously, but then also identifying when they're um, like the team might be jumping down a rabbit hole or investing too much time and helping to kind of guide whether it's the right time to implement a time box. Uh, so that way we can come up for air and decide whether or not this is worth the investment um, and just kind of guiding through that natural tendency of I think data engineers, or if like any anybody who gets really close to a technical domain, you it's it's hard to see the forest for the trees sometimes, um, and and being having having enough context to be able to speak to them and take them on the journey as well to see the big picture, as well as take people who are like only seeing the big picture to help them understand the complexity is important. Yeah, I mean that sounds like a, a really good point. There there possibly is a danger in being too technical, so. Um... It probably helps to have a, a bit more of a um, an insight into the, the customer um, and, and what the customer is wanting, rather than that you know, complete focus on on the data or, or on the engineering of the data. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we, we're there to provide solutions, um, and so to have that solution mm -hmm. focus rather than like the the very technical um, perfectionist engineering solution. I had a problem, sort of in that space when I, in my previous uh, uh, company, which was based on travel, and it was a software product in travel. And so our product managers needed to not only understand the underlying data of the sort of what the product was, but they had to really understand the customer, which in this case was travel corporations and companies. And so I worry that for for like for us, where we're, we're building a new product and it's gonna be totally different that even if we get someone who's, you know, skilled in the technology and, you know, a go-getter with, you can build relationships, how much does the subject matter expertise on understanding your customer really play in? I don't, it, like, like I said in my intro, I don't know a ton about product management other than when I've seen it done by colleagues and, and so I'm, I'm, we're trying to pick out, you know, how do we find the right person? To help us with that and i would love some thoughts on like how much does how much can you teach the who is the customer and what do they want like on the job yeah hire really carefully is some people are going to lack the situational awareness to ever do it correctly and i have a senior analyst who like even in their role it's starting to block them to not be able to do it without help well enough I think that's one of the biggest challenges of like of the data P, of, a, of a data PM role in general is that like Amanda you kind of alluded to this you need to find someone who's like willing to learn to be a generalist in a little bit of everything from like every aspect of analytics from data engineering data science to like helping stakeholders define meaningful metrics to track their uh, the impact uh, on the business to Stephanie, from your perspective, like whether you're building a product, a data product for internal customers or, you know, external customers, like you have to be able to kind of empathize with their needs and put yourself in their shoes. And I think it is helpful if you have had experience, you know, on the other side of things, on the business side of things, but it's nearly impossible to find someone who's like met, checked all of those boxes. Um, so I think like that 
Amanda, your point about finding someone who's willing to learn and kind of dive in and, and talk to other people at the company and learn their perspective is, you know, it, it's really challenging. I think, I guess it's the short answer. And I personally, I don't think I do every single one of them well, which is, you know, that question resonated with me in that way too. <laughs> I, I've also found that um, if you can scope a role more narrowly to give people a chance to really excel in a smaller domain, it's easier then to like add more things to it than it is to pick somebody to be like, okay, now you're going to do analytics and data science and data engineering and BI tools. And just like pick, pick a smaller thing, let them really be great at that. And then you can always either hire more people or tack on their responsibilities as they mature and as the, like, the organization matures. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of the people on this call are like currently grappling with this question of like, how do I bring this into my organization? What does this role look like? Kind of taking a step back from that, what are some of the moments that you or and whether there's like a team size trigger or a project type or or something like when do you know that your team needs this role and what's the moment that you bring this person in um or if you you know did it again would you have someone from the beginning <laughs> also an option um i guess i guess my take would be you bring this in when you can't manage all the requests coming from everywhere because so I'll give you the example. We go and we run a bunch of experiments. We actually need to go present that all to the business while we're doing many other things. And they're still gonna want more and more all the time. It's like, it's hard to manage all that and run a team. Like it becomes a lot, especially as your team gets more than 10 people. So I, I think it's when it's just not manageable and when the business isn't getting the communication they want, that's a good time to bring in this kind of role. And when you say not manageable, yeah. you mean not manageable probably by the engineering manager or the like manager. Of the yeah, team. the engineering manager or whoever's running, who's ever running the portfolio of engineering, uh, the portfolio of projects, the data projects. Okay. Yeah. I mean, listen, you could be forward thinking and maybe do it earlier. And that would be awesome if your team, if your company has the budget for it. But you don't want to be in this scenario long term where you just can't manage all of your end users expectations. Like that's too late. Yeah, that that resonates with with my team. So, um, when we started, I was in the team when there was maybe eight or nine of us, and um, we were able to keep on top of what each other were doing and stand up, and and the engineering manager was able to keep you know reasonably um on top of requirements coming in and and make sure that there was no overlap and that and that there was some commonality, um, and then it just we had too many customers too many people working on different projects and we were finding that there was overlap that there was stuff being delivered way in advance of being required stuff being delivered and shelved and that's when it just made sense for someone to um you know, come in and sit over it and let the engineers go on with engineering and um you may look at what our customers are looking for try to get ahead of some of their requests and um bring some sort of strategy to what we do I found in our experience, um, kind of echoing a little bit of what uh, Max and Jay and Amanda yourself have been kind of alluding to, uh, we found an unmet need that the existing teams were not solving for. And it's usually, it usually occurs at what, like what we call seams. So every, every, every product team might have kind of a domain and then there's these like shared kind of overlapping spaces and these spaces don't really have clear leaders. And there's sometimes an intuition that there's a problem that needs to be solved here, but nobody's owning it. And PMs are kind of good owners in a, in, in my experience anyway, they have these independent roadmaps that they can then action against. And they don't necessarily have, um, they're not an input necessarily to another team. So it's what I call like an output team. So, um, and, and data generally, uh, at least in my experience, again, our input teams, they like support other, other teams. So this independent roadmap kind of starts off small. So it's an, usually it's an enterprising analyst who tackles a, a problem, starts to get um, momentum and consensus. People start, people's ears start to perk up. And then you realize, okay, there's a there there, takes time. And then you start building, um, building consensus in a team around that individual. And at least again, in our experience, um, that then becomes 
um, kind of like the technical product manager. Uh, so it's a little bit of like small scope, a little bit of unmet need. Um, that's what we found works. I do think the, um, we do sprint planning, which was like a new concept to disparate analysts. So my org kind of formed when we took these siloed analysts and put them together, oriented towards a central function. And Shaw has never heard of it. If there's a software engineering best practice, we're not doing it in a lot of areas. Um, so I started, you know, bringing some of that in. And when we started doing sprint planning, that like delayed the need to have the product management because there is that forum where for my different areas that I support, there's like a systems product manager kind of role, uh, director role over systems, internal systems in that area. And they come to the sprint meeting. So it, it kind of creates that coordination. Um, the challenge is it's super time heavy for me to like manage the, you know, the developers manage their individual sprint tasks and things like that. But doing that planning and keeping it happening well and effectively is a lot of hours that, you know, it doesn't, it won't scale when I get it out across the entire team. Um, so that's something that's kind of on my mind. Yeah, that's very interesting. So far, it sounds like um, in many places, the, uh, the scope of uh, companies are way bigger than what I'm, I'm experiencing right now, because um, we're one, then two, we're three, we're actually four now, but then we're going to be six in a couple of months. Um, so I've had the luxury of um, kind of deciding kind of ahead of time how I want the teams to form and say that I want to start doing um, quite similar agile practices already. So I'm acting like a data product manager already, but it's, it's this, I guess this sounds like it's more rare and it seems like it's something that you discover when you have a lot of analysts with a lot of backlog that that's um, becomes unmanageable at some point and now a uh, product manager is needed. Or I wanted to, um, sorry, people's uh, bases keep moving around. I think Jay mentioned that there was an the engineering manager that found like after a while it was too much to cope. And then that's why you're finding there's a need for another role that's different from the engineering manager but just adds more like the project management side of things rather than what was more um, natural up until that point just requests that become some of them becomes projects and then that kind of goes out of hand um, has anyone else actually got had the other experience um, that, that I'm kind of feeling at the moment I, I'm curious um, No. How'd you describe the experience of starting from scratch and having to like, so set things up before there was even like a process there? What would me say some more about that? Yeah, exactly. Um, as in um, knowing, like planning a, road, a data roadmap ahead of time uh, or having a backlog of projects. So that's how I kind of felt I came as a more like individual contributor and then kind of spoken to each department and ha had a feel of what projects are missing or what kind of data needs are. And then I've kind of created, uh, you know, proof of concepts of bits of things here and there, and then went, okay, yeah, you know, it's useful. Now, can I have more people, please, to, to, to you know, to have, to, to full on make this, you know, real and proper. Um, I sort of have experienced this. Um, I, I w I've been the single data analyst for about two years now, and we're only just hiring two new analysts. It this uh, towards the beginning of this year, maybe a little bit last year, um, things just started to pile up way too much. I had way too many things to do, um, and and the priority list was just pages and pages long. Um, and but they were we had very clear sort of. Uh, sections of the company where we could say, okay, let's embed, you know, this person over in operations, this person over on our B2C, and I can take care of our, our customer uh, section. Uh, so you, it's like really defining that space and to see what really makes sense for your company. Um, because just trying to just throwing analysts and throwing money at it is not going to help you because it's, it, you've, you have to organize, like sort of PM it, you know, organize your spaces and then and then throw a, an analyst into that section. And so you know what you're looking for to fill that role. I think that when when I think about the the best 
product managers that I've worked with, what I really like is that they're they're not there to help us make some way to do everything that everyone wants. They're there to help us look at the things everyone wants and decides which ones are worth doing. And there's a lot of strategic thinking that I want out of that role because I'm so like in the weeds building whatever I'm building that day. And I want to know that someone is looking at the, you know, the customer and the situation we're in and the longer roadmap and, and like make, you know, keeping track of that we are in fact heading towards the, like the goal we all actually agreed on. So. Yeah, I, I, I think that a very typical uh, piece, at least for kind of more of an internal analytics reporting product managers is, is also similarly to define like who, what's the persona of user that you're really trying to empower? Is it, and then enabling the focus around that. So understanding their pain points, kind of like typical product management, user story mapping, whatever, there's a thousand tools that you can pull in to help kind of create this shared context and understanding of their problems. But like that could be in many organizations, like we have the embedded analysts, so empowering our embedded analysts to be 10x more effective, that could be the lever that we're gonna unlock the most value. Or if you have really, really technical end users that are in Looker every day, then it's how can we uh, create solutions and uh, data products or uh, widgets and things for them to consume and analyze that data effectively. Um, and it's really context specific on your business, um, the, the industry that you're in, the types of data sets that you have available. And like, I think the, the product manager is trying to kind of piece together a cohesive story of like, who are you going to focus on and why? Because you can't do everything as, as people have been, have been mentioning so far. One of the uh, things that, yeah, oh, good, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, Helen's been unmuted for a bunch of time. So I'm going to let her talk. And then I've got one more blitz question um, for the, the wrap up. Um, Thanks, Caitlin. Um, I was just going to, um, I think, like, completely agree with what folks have said about like, the usefulness of PMs to help like prioritize estimate impact of various projects. And I think, like, in my experience, that worked really well like coming into a reporting function particularly when i was at a healthcare company where we had a bunch of like regulatory reporting requirements but we're also trying to like get ahead on improving operational efficiencies and improving um our performance on like clinical quality indicators so there were a lot like a lot of different things going on and competing priorities some of which were like urgent needs from a regulatory perspective so PMing was really useful on that side of the coin but also i think it can be really useful like if you've got a data science team in place who's building products, like whether they're operational models or something more advanced and people aren't using them, um, usually they're like trying to focus on the right problems and, and you know, probably headed in the right direction, but they're just not able to take it over that last mile and get the buy-in from stakeholders and make it feel useful and integrate it into their daily workflows. I think that is a really big challenge is like getting people in integrating it into the tools that they're already using so that they don't have to switch between, you know, 10 different systems. And I'm thinking about internal stakeholders more so here, but um, I think that is one very useful way that uh, PMs can, uh, can have an impact aside from just like prioritization of work. Yeah, I think that that enablement and sort of just user experience <laughs> piece of it is really huge. Um, okay, so we've got five minutes left. But the question that has come up over and over in the chat is like, where, what is this versus other roles and which comes first? So like, how does this role interface with an engineering manager or a data science manager or someone who is more kind of on the technical people management side? And if you have to choose, what do you start with? Do you start with um, data leadership in some sort of more fuzzy leadership sense? Do you start with product management? Um, how do you all think about kind of those roles and priority and what you would start with first, which is like a really big question to say, like, don't make your answer more than, you know, 30 seconds. So everybody can jump in before we uh, wrap up. I've given you an insurmountable task and now no I, one wants to speak up. <laughs> I, I think it depends on the, um, w where you're starting in the process. Um, so 
for, for instance, like we have a, a search team now and we really didn't have any great search functionality capabilities really whatsoever. Um, and so we decided to start with a director of search and then add a, a PM later when it felt like we had the need. Um, for, as far as analytics wise and engineering wise, um, we were already in the middle of uh, sort of a, a workflow and a process and we just sort of reached that capacity that we've been talking about of like, okay, now we really need a, a PM just to help prioritize and organize and, and that sort of thing. Um, and But we're not at the point where we need a, a director yet. We, we have embedded analysts, we have engineering working together, but uh, and we have a PM, but we don't really need the, the, the big, big director di directing all of data yet. Uh, so I think it depends on where you're sort of picking things up from. I would, I'm the, I was the technical manager first. And then as like the delivery piece has gotten better, you know, we had all these disparate analysts reporting to people who didn't understand data, a lot of methods that didn't make sense, not a lot of like, you know, 100 item unorganized Excel backlog type management of the backlog going on. And so I kind of came in and got the basics squared away. And now I'm really feeling like, it'd be great. I wish I had a data PM, that'd be awesome. Uh, it would take a lot off me uh, and let me be more strategic with our leadership and be less on the day-to-day -day shepherding of the roadmap and avoiding of duplication, um, which really takes a lot of meetings and coordination. So I think it depends on what your data, pro like what your data product is. Um, you know, who it serves internally and then where your org is today. I'd also throw a warning out that if you hire this role without defining boundaries well, you can make it challenging for them to work effectively with an engineering manager. Um, you know, it's it's easy to be like, we need you to come in here and like make a roadmap, but then if there's already an existing roadmap or if there's like other competing priorities, like making it kind of clear what's a negotiation, you know, where they have authority, where it's influenced that authority, that's hard. And I will say that a nice thing is that a director can help to define some of those things well. But if you are not at a scale where you need that, like you just make sure there's somebody in your org who gets those kinds of problems to help you set those things up so that you're set up for success. Yes, I wanted to add with like <laughs> a lot, it depends, you know, depending on what your, your org needs. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most common and also <laughs> best and worst answer. Um, I think it's about um, if data is, is the infrastructure, for example, is already part of the, the org and you have independent analysts that can work you know, yeah, independently, that you don't necessarily need um, you know, a, someone to help with the backlog until it becomes too big. Whereas then if you're coming in fresh and there is no data plan, there is no data structure on anything, there's no ETL, there's, there's like, yeah, starting from scratch. Um, then having um, a director type position to define the roadmap for how to build everything from scratch is, is I would say more um, useful than hiring someone who's you know, just uh, very focused on getting stuff done or yeah, standalone projects when the infrastructure isn't built to last that long. And then finding out you know, a year in that you have to rebuild things because it's not bigger and you hire someone else to help out and then it becomes a bit harder to manage. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I'd add. And, and definitely the role expectations, having very clear defined roles is um, something that's super important. And that's, um, yeah, I, I am always like obsessed with like making sure that there's no ambiguity there because it's it's just like a recipe for um, unhappiness <laughs> in the long term. Yeah, and I think the point Max made and then and you've been making there, Sam, as well, about you know, that there's a real role for the, the product owner, the product manager, you know, not just hiring one because um, you know, we're all supposed to be working on, on products now. And um, so when there is a role and that there there's authority and there's um, you know, strategic decisions, as well as the backlog management um, that a product owner or a product manager can bring to the role, then that's the time. But um, un until then, you know, if the director of engineering or the engineering manager can handle it, then, then great. Awesome. Um, so we're at time and I want to make sure everybody gets off to wherever they need to be next. I would love for this conversation to continue and locally optimistic. It's something that people ask about constantly. Everyone is, it's very top of mind. Um, so 
let's take it over there. But thank you so much for joining. It's been really awesome. And special thanks to Sam, Helen, and Amanda for committing to be here before we knew this was like quite as top of mind for so many people and making sure that we had good, good folks with great backgrounds on this um, to make this a high quality conversation. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day or evening.